Hey again everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a good one. We're talking about camouflage of tanks today, a very peculiar looking camouflage that a lot of people have asked me, Matt, why is that tank camouflaged in that way? And it does come from the British camouflage scheme of back in the Cold War and somewhat of the Navy camouflage schemes of World War II. Today we are talking about the Berlin Brigade camouflage pattern. And right now you are looking at the beautiful Chieftain main battle tank with the Berlin Brigade camouflage pattern placed upon it. Uh, this footage is actually from the Ontario Regiment Royal Canadian Armoured Corps Museum, uh, a fantastic tank museum that I've always wanted to visit. So thank you to those who did allow me to actually showcase the footage of this vehicle with this camouflage scheme because uh, it's quite hard to find. And of course at some point I will be visiting the museum, for sure I will be. Um, it is basically the Canadian version of Bovington Tank Museum, so I really cannot wait to go down and take a look at some of the equipment there and definitely do some videos for you guys in the future. So thank you again to the Ontario Regiment Museum. So we are talking about the Berlin Brigade camouflage pattern that was developed in 1982 for the British Army of the Rhine when other camouflages in service were deemed inappropriate for urban environments in which the tanks served. Inspiration for the new camouflage was taken from the popular Dazzle camouflage scheme used on Royal Navy warships during World War II, which utilised various randomised shapes and colours to break up the ship's outline, making it significantly more difficult to determine the class, speed, direction of travel, or even the range of the ship. The ships were painted with bold, bright, and confusing shapes which recognised disruption created by wave structures and made it very difficult for them to actually see the ships. Zebra stripes presented many potential bows to the enemy, making it hard to judge direction and false bow waves were painted on to imply different speeds. You need to know the distance, speed and direction of travel of a ship to actually engage it properly with the guns. Before radar targeting was used and available, stereo optical range finders were used, similar in the method to split view focusing in cameras. You had to spot a distinct vertical surface on the ship. This is a lot harder to do if the outlines are broken up and the essential information is harder to obtain. In World War I, the Dazzle ships were targeted slightly more often than the Grey or Camo Scheme ships. However, they were hit much less often than the others. It seemed to have worked pretty good at the time, and the British actually hired a professional artist such as Norman Wilkinson to design the Dazzle schemes and tailor them to individual ships during World War I. All these visual clues were important when trying to acquire a target at sea. Now redundant, of course, by modern methods of long-range detection with radar, however, they are still quite valid on land and in urban environments for tanks of today. The Berlin Brigade scheme itself was originated with an officer commanding known as Wayne Davies of the 4th 7th Royal Dragoon Guards Tank Squadron in Berlin in 1982. The chosen colours for the Berlin Brigade camo were grey, white, brown and black, although there are some differences and similarities with different types of colours in the package as well. And these reflect colours commonly used in surrounding buildings, and from the right range and angle, entire tanks would become near invisible to some of the troops actually looking at these vehicles in urban environments with the naked eye. The Chieftain obviously was used by the British Army in Germany during the Cold War as part of the British Army of the Rhine, which subsequently was part of NORTHAG, or Northern Army Group, part of NATO. Now at the time, the tanks had a new element of surprise with this kind of camouflage scheme and it was seen to be a force multiplier. The Soviet tank aimer that would potentially be aiming at these beautiful main battle tanks would have invested many hours studying NATO vehicles back at home, but confronted with a rather unfamiliar silhouette. He might have lost the initiative as to knowing what kind of tank it was or potentially even one of its own. Shoot or be shot at any advantage through deception or misdirection by simple application of paint was very worthy of investigation further with the British Armed Forces. The Major experimented with cardboard silhouettes of his chieftain main battle tank in the windows of his office. He noticed the representation and repetition of vertical lines and by careful placement of different sized squares and rectangles actually enabled him to disguise the shape of the tank. The colours being chosen, grey, white, brown and black, resembled the shades that were found on buildings, windows and doors, and when the vehicle was painted in these colours and put against a backdrop of these areas, it actually from distance blended in very well. Irrespective of the size of vehicle, whether it be these beautiful Chieftain MBTs, or an APC or a Land Rover, the blocks of colour are approximately 18 inches square and should not be scaled up or down for different vehicles. Antenna were also a huge giveaway. If you were to break the vertical length of the aerial up into sections of different colour, it almost disappears. The visual clues were no longer available. 
The scheme was quite unpopular, actually, with troops when they had it at first, liking the more standardised camouflage scheme of being able to use the dark greens and black that most standardised British Army equipment at the time used. I must admit, if I was jumping into one of these vehicles back in the day, I would be a little concerned. But in an urban environment, it kind of makes sense. But after time, they actually grew to accept it, realising its effectiveness during the campaign. At distance of about 100 yards, a tank in the Berlin Brigade camo, quote, almost disappeared, unquote, according to Davies, and quote, I can't see your effing tank, quote, a corps commander actually said, which goes to show that actually it does its job very, very well. Of course, we have seen this camouflage used in more modern main battle tanks. In late 2017, several Challenger 2 main battle tanks from the Royal Tank Regiment's Urban Specialist Ajax Squadron were equipped with the Berlin Brigade camouflage for use in urban training. Ajax Squadron are the urban specialists within the regiment and are looking to test current doctrine, tactics and procedures while experimenting with other techniques from across NATO and around the world. This camouflage actually being one of these particular kinds of doctrine for urban environments as it was proved very well and useful and successful with the Chieftain tank back in the day. As efforts to improve main battle tank capabilities within urban environments are ongoing, these Challenger 2s are still wearing their Berlin Brigade camouflage today and potentially for the foreseeable future. Which is pretty impressive, you know, I must admit, uh, when I first looked at these tanks a long time ago, having no idea what the Berlin Brigade uh, camouflage was, I was like, someone is taking something very, very special, <laughs> whoever designed that. But then doing some research, I found out it's actually pretty legit, and it makes sense. You know, I didn't think of it in that way. Uh, I actually wasn't sure at all where they were going with the camouflage scheme at all. But once you do a little backstory, it, it makes complete sense. Uh, these vehicles would have struggled, though, going into back into, I guess, the green environment that they were uh, potentially going to go into. So these would have been specifically city-fighting tanks, which, you know, tanks in the city is never a good time anyway. But fascinating, nonetheless, to know that this camouflage scheme actually worked very well. And a lot of the troops, although resistant to it, fell in love with it a little bit. Uh, it's nice to see that someone, you know, who's actually in the ranks and not some fancy engineer with a degree... Uh, elsewhere who has nothing to do with the military designing the camouflage scheme you know an officer of this regiment actually decided upon himself to figure out the best scheme that will work for the tanks and good on him you know clearly if it's that effective we're still using it on tanks almost you know 30 years later that's pretty impressive honestly um so folks i really appreciate you stopping by today if you do have any uh, questions or comments on this camouflage you're more than welcome to put it in the comment section below uh, i really would appreciate if you could hit the like button if you want to be uh, notified of any upcoming content in the future click the little bell by the subscribe button and those of you who have been supporting my patreon page thank you so much for all the support you've been giving me check the description box below for any social media or support towards my channel also, just something as a bit of a side note, I'd just like to do a bit of a shout out to Tundra Tactical YouTube channel. I was recently invited to come to their Discord just to hang out, have a chat, uh, introduce myself, because uh, apparently one of the uh, the key points of the channel that they do is uh, weapons reviews and weapon information and rifles and things like that, which is clearly content I'm going to enjoy, and I think you guys will enjoy it too. Um, the host and the people who actually run the channel, really friendly, really nice bunch of guys, uh, big fans of mine apparently, and uh, when I went into the Discord, we actually talked about hosting uh, a live stream chat on Tundra Tactical's YouTube channel that I could go hang out, uh, drink some beers, talk about weapons and military stuff, and I think that'd be a lot of fun so stay tuned for more details but guys please go check out the channel i always try and look out for other new aspiring youtubers so let's keep it going thanks and bye bye